Hello everyone, welcome back to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Today we've got, as you can see, a little bit more of a impromptu setup. We're not back in the studio. So today, we're going to be doing, I wanted to stay on schedule and do episode three of our four in a row episodes of on election month with Fight and Revive. Four episodes in a row of election coverage focused on the 2024 elections. We're going to have a playlist with all these episodes, um, including some others about the election, linked in the description and over there on the channel. So make sure you check that out on the YouTube channel. And now let's get into it. Today we're going to be looking at the 2024 U.S. House of Representatives elections. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So today, the goal, it's going to be a short episode, um, but like I said, I did want to make sure we got one out. We just released one on Friday, but it was technically last week's episode, so I wanted to make sure we went ahead and got one up on Monday as well. But today, for our shorter episode, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the most competitive U.S. House elections. Obviously, Republicans right now have a 218 to 212 majority in the House, but that's going to be cut down with Mike Gallagher retiring to 217 to 213 majority, leaving us with just a one-seat majority because you have to have 216 votes for a majority in the House. So it's very tight. Um, I think the Democrats could take the chamber back over in 2024, but I also think the Republicans could hold it. Um, I've already got, uh, done my predictions for U.S. Senate seats state by state, uh, president state by state, and I've talked about RFK. Those are our election videos so far. So make sure you check those out in the playlist. And now we're going to look at <clears throat> some of our uh, the most competitive House races, and this is not... Uh, by the way, this is not. I'm not going to be making predictions in this one. I'm just going to let you know so you kind of have an idea of what the most competitive house races in the country are. So, right now, this is an article from USA Today, which is who will control the house after 2024. From Michigan to California, these are the tight races to watch. The article says all 434 house seats are up for grabs, but just a small fraction of them will be competitive and help determine which party takes control of the lower chamber next year. The stakes are particularly high in 2024, considering Republicans have the narrowest of majorities in the House. GOP lawmakers' razor-thin command has made it difficult for them to pass conservative priorities. Yeah, do tell. Uh, thanks to a handful of recalcitrant members. Yeah, uh, re recalcitrant, another word for rhino. Uh, Republicans control 219 currently. This is actually a little bit uh, behind. This is at 219. Democrats hold 212. Democrats will hold 213 when Tom Suozzi who uh, won in the George Santos runoff, gets elected, and then, like I said, we had those Ken Buck and Mike Gallagher retirements. Ken Buck probably just retiring to spite Lauren Boebert. Um, <clears throat> Republicans are very good at petty differences and spiting each other. Um, here locally, uh, on the Lynchburg City Council, I'm not technically in Lynchburg, but I'm very close to it. I'm in Campbell County. In Lynchburg City Council, we took it over for the first time in 20 years, and uh, yeah, the Republicans have gotten literally nothing done because they've been fighting with each other. Uh, they have a 5-2 majority, and the Democrats are still winning the votes because the Republicans won't vote with each other out of petty spite. So if you live in the area, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's just an example of how Republicans are very good at beating themselves. So <clears throat> here are some phrases to watch this year. Republican seats in Joe Biden's districts. Much of the focus in this year's House races will be on the 17 Republicans representing districts President Joe Biden won in the 2020 presidential election. These crossover districts, as they are called, will be critical in determining control of the lower chamber. Chamber, excuse me. So, these districts are where Democrats see their best chances of recapturing the House. Republicans will have to defend most, if not all, of these seats if they hope to keep their slim majority or expand it. The 17 Republicans representing Biden districts are Biden won district from 2020 are David Schweikert, Juan Siscomani, both in Arizona, John Duarte, David Valadao, Mike Garcia, Young Kim, and Michelle Steele, all in California, Don Bacon from Nebraska, Tom McKean from New Jersey, Nicola Lota from New York, Anthony Despacito, also New York, Mike Lawler, and Mare Molinaro, as well as Brandon Williams, all from New York, Lori Chavez de Rimer from Oregon, Brian Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania, and Jen Kiggins from my home state of Virginia. She represents the second congressional district. Um, she won just a couple years back, was able to flip the seat. Unfortunately, she's not been much good. She's very much an establishment figure, uh, very much a rhino, Republican name only. I know that term gets thrown around a lot, but it's very fitting in this scenario. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, she hasn't amounted to much, but she's been a sort of reliable Republican vote. So at least there's, we did take it back from the Democrats, but it's going to be a tight seat to keep. Like, we, like they said, Biden won that district in 2020, Virginia's second. 
Now, there's Democrat seats in Donald Trump won district, districts. While not as many in number, Republicans also have a set of vulnerable seats to target. Democrats representing districts former President Donald Trump won in the 2020 election. Now, remember, Donald Trump a lot more hated than Joe Biden was in 2020. So the Democrats here are, I think, in more danger in these districts than all the Republicans are in losing their districts. Because just because Joe Biden won a district, they won their district, that could just be Donald Trump hate. Um, whereas for Democrats to win a district where Trump won, it would be very hard for them to hold. The five Democrats representing Trump won districts, districts are Representative Mary Peltola, Democrat Alaska, more on that in a minute, Jared Golden, Maine, Marcy Captor, Ohio, Matt Cartwright, Pennsylvania, and Marie Glessenkamp, uh, Glessenkamp Perez out of Washington. Uh, in Alaska, Mary Peltola somehow won the at-large seat. And you wonder, Democrats don't win Alaska. Why did she win that? It's because uh, back when this she won a couple years ago, she was the Democrat nominee and Sarah Palin was the Republican running. But a bunch of Republicans um, hate Sarah Palin. The, the establishment set their target on her a while back and she's been branded ever since. And so out of spite, they wouldn't vote for Sarah Palin. And so they split the Republican vote and Peltola won. So I would think that's something we can take back in 2024. This should be a good target seat for the GOP. But we'll have to see. Um, I'd, it's not going to be easy. Races never are, or very rarely, especially when you're trying to take on an incumbent. But I would think that can be a, a seat Republicans can take back. And they also say the Hill, uh, excuse me, the USA Today article continues. It's not just crossover district that both parties will be heavily investing in this year. There's also a handful of seats in play for both Democrats and Republicans that could make or break the House majority. In Michigan, for example, Democrat representatives Alyssa Slotkin and Dan Kildee are leaving their competitive districts, potentially opening up their seats for Republicans taking. Slotkin is running for the Senate while Kildee is retiring. And uh, I did mention, talk about Alyssa Slotkin in um, the state of Michigan. I did talk about her running for that seat in my Senate video. Again, check out the playlist in the description. Democrats also have a chance to flip California's 41st congressional district from red to blue. Representative Ken Calvert, Republican California, a House veteran who served since 93, is now considered, considered a vulnerable member thanks to redistricting from the 2020 census. That's where the article ends. So we're wrapping up here. All that to say, um, that just gives you an idea of what the races are you want to look at. Um, if you're a political nerd like myself, you know, you might have been thinking, I know the House is up for grabs this year, but I don't know exactly what seats are vulnerable. Now you know you can look it up, do research on the candidates. If you live in those uh, uh, districts, you can do more research on them. You can look up some polling, and you all can just find out for your own satisfaction, make your own predictions as to who will win the House. And by the way, let me know, comment below who you think will win the presidency, House, and Senate. Right now, I have probably still the Democrats taking the House, although by the narrowest of margins. But to find out my Senate and presidential predictions, you'll have to check the playlist below. Thank you so much for watching, folks. This has been Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer, and thanks for uh, bearing with me through this impromptu episode. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. We're already being shadow banned on YouTube. So if you would like this specific video, then subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated and help us reach more people. Thank you for watching.